Last season, with the Solar 3.0 changes, we got really spoilt for healing, especially with classy restoration on the artifact for Solar builds. We still have Healing Grenade and other ways to proc restoration on the Solar subclass, but there aren't a lot of ways to get that passive, constant healing on the other elements. So this video is going to show you how you can easily augment your non-Solar builds to add this kind of healing, and it's way less restrictive in terms of build diversity than you might think. I did many hours of testing on this and have put the results at the end of the video for you to reference when putting together your own builds. Please don't be cut off by how long this video is, honestly most of it is just that list of everything that counts. Well of Life is a solar elemental well mod that gives 10 seconds of constant healing while active, and it doesn't get interrupted when taking damage. It's basically a mini restoration effect. It procs on picking up a solar elemental well, which on solar subclasses is really easy to do from the neutral generation mods on melee, grenade, solar weapon, and super kills. But on non-solar, you only have one option, explosive well maker. It spawns a solar well when getting an explosive damage multi-kill. The obvious forms of explosive damage are rockets, grenade launchers, grenades, and supers. But what if you don't want to be forced to run those weapons in your build? And when Well of Life only lasts 10 seconds at base, it feels bad to have to rely on your grenade cooldown to refresh it. But thankfully, there are many forms of damage that count as explosive, even if at first glance you wouldn't think it. A lot of these are already known, for example Tractor Cannon, an exotic heavy shotgun counts as explosive. But I don't see these interactions talked about much, and from my testing I found a few damage sources that were very surprising, both in the do count as explosive and don't count as explosive categories. Much more on that later, but first I want to show you three quick build examples, one for each class across all the non-solar subclasses to show you how easy it is to work this into your builds, while not sacrificing things such as Font of Might or a good DPS heavy weapon. One thing to note now though, Explosive Wellmaker has an invisible cooldown of around 6 seconds, so you'll only spawn one well at a time, no matter how many explosive multi-kills you get at once. This doesn't matter too much, as you only need one well to proc Well of Life, which lasts longer than the Explosive Wellmaker cooldown anyway, but for anyone used to spamming wells with Melee Wellmaker for example, it's worth bearing in mind. The first build I'll show you is on Revenant Hunter, using Mask of Bacris, Aegis Scepter, Insidious with Dragonfly, and Reed's Regret. For combat mods, I have Explosive Wellmaker, Well of Life, Seeking Wells, Elemental Shards, and Font of Might. Aspects are Grim Harvest to spawn stasis shards on killing slowed and frozen enemies, and Touch of Winter to improve grenades. I'm using Duskfield so it features a crystal and a larger radius. Fragments are Whisper of Fissures for higher damage and radius of shatters, Whisper of Durance for longer duration of slow effects and Duskfield, Whisper of Bonds for super energy on defeating frozen enemies, Whisper of Shards for faster grenade recharge on crystal shatters, and Whisper of Conduction for tracking of stasis shards. The explosive damage I need to proc Explosive Wellmaker will be primarily coming from stasis shatter multi-kills of crystals or frozen enemies, but I also have Dragonfly on my Insidious which works too. The Storm part of my Revenant Super can also proc Explosive Wellmaker here if needed, but for the most part we'll be saving super energy to use with Aegis Scepter. To start the combat loop I throw a Dusk Field, dodge to activate Light Shift from Mask of Bacris which provides a 10% damage bonus against slowed or frozen targets, as well as a 10% bonus to Arc Weapons which applies to Insidious. Then I shatter the Crystal, add clear with Insidious, and now I should have Font of Might up for a 25% damage bonus on Stasis Weapons, and Well of Life for passive healing. Then I swap to Aegis Scepter to continue add clear which slows and freezes on kills, as well as reloading itself. And because frozen enemies will be shattering, I'll be getting more stasis affected explosive kills to refresh Well of Life and Font of Might. When a more powerful enemy arrives, I can activate the Catalyst firing mode for even more damage, slow and freeze on hit, and because of Whisper of Bonds, it recharges my super energy even while it's being drained in this firing mode, so you can keep it up for longer. I'm not running any anti-champion mods here and I'm still able to easily take them down. Alternatively, I can use Reed's Regret for deleting them quickly too. On Warlock, I'm running Voidwalker with Empowering Rift and Suppressor Grenade, using Verity's Brow, Fortissimo, Collective Obligation, which received buffs this season to Void Leech setup, duration and damage, and a Taipan Linear Fusion. Combat mods are Explosive Wellmaker, Well of Life, Seeking Wells, Elemental Armaments, and Font of Might. For Aspects, I've chosen Feed the Void for Devour, and Child of the Old Gods for additional weakening, plus healing because I'm on Empowering Rift, and Class Ability Energy. Fragments are Echo of Undermining for weakened grenades, Echo of Instability for Void Weapon Volatile on grenade kills, 
Echo of Reprisal for additional super energy, and Echo of Persistence for increased duration of Devour. The explosive damage to proc Explosive Wellmaker in this build will come from direct grenade kills, volatile explosions because of Echo of Instability and the Pocket Singularity melee, and my super. To start the combat loop on this build, I throw a Suppressor Grenade and my Pocket Singularity melee to suppress, weaken and make volatile a powerful enemy, in this case a Barrier Champion. I then fire a few shots of Collective Obligation to leech all those debuffs before the barrier comes up, then when the barrier drops, I put down my Empowering Rift, activate the Charged Leech, reapply all those debuffs to the Champion, then quickly swap to Taipan Linear Fusion to kill it before the shield comes back up. I can then use the remaining Charged Void Leech shots to add clear and repeat the combat loop. Occasionally Solar Wells will spawn from Grenade or Volatile Multi-Kills to give me additional healing, and Void Wells will spawn to proc Font of Might. Against weaker enemies you won't be able to leech the debuffs back off them once the charged leech ends because they'll be dead, however due to Verity's Brow your Grenade will come back much faster so you'll be able to reproc, weaken, suppress and Volatile very often regardless. Now you might be thinking, wait, do you really need Well of Life here because you have healing from Devour and Child of the Old Gods already? And that's a good question, but as Devour only procs on kills and Child of the Old Gods takes time to set itself up before you can receive its healing, I like having Well of Life available to keep my health topped up while dealing with higher health enemies. Also having more forms of healing available makes it safer to choose Empowering Rift over Healing Rift. You'll also note I'm not running anti-champion mods. This is because I wanted to keep this build activity neutral. You can obviously add those as necessary if you need them, but as you can see it's still perfectly viable to take down these champions without them, depending on the activity. And finally on Titan I'm running Thundercrash Striker with Seismic Strike and Pulse Grenade, using Dune Marchers, Riptide with Chill Clip, 7th Seraph SMG with Dragonfly, and Legend of Acrius, which received a huge buff this season with Trench Barrel. Combat mods are Explosive Wellmaker, Well of Life, Elemental Armaments, Font of Might, and Strength of Rasputin, which spawns a cell from kills with the Seraph SMG and gives melee energy back when collected. I know, Warmind Cell mods in 2022, who'd have thought? For Aspects, I've gone with Touch of Thunder, so the Pulse Grenade spawns Ionic Traces for ability regen, and Knockout for extra melee damage and additional healing on melee kills. Fragments are Spark of Resistance to take less damage when near enemies, Spark of Discharge for Ionic Traces on Arc Weapon kills, Spark of Magnitude for increased Pulse Grenade duration, and Spark of Recharge for faster grenade and melee regen while critically wounded. Other armor mods that I recommend for this build are Melee Kickstart on Stasis Arms and Outreach on Arc Class Item. Both of these help get Seismic Strike back much faster, which I'll explain shortly. The explosive damage for Explosive Wellmaker in this build comes from the Pulse Grenade, Seismic Strike if enemies are close enough together to get a multi-kill, the Dune Marches Chain Lightning, Dragonfly on the SMG, and potentially shattering frozen enemies with Chill Clip. Although you rarely need to use it, it's nice to have as an option rather than a kinetic that has zero chance of spawning a well. To start the combat loop on this build, get a grenade multi-kill to proc Well of Life, take out Acrius, Seismic Strike a powerful enemy to proc Trench Barrel and delete them. Then pick up another solar well that should have spawned from nearby enemies dying to Dune Marchers. I then put my Barricade down to get some melee energy back due to Outreach, after this you should be at about 50%, and kill more enemies with the SMG to potentially spawn the Warmind Cell. The reason I'm running Strength of Rasputin in this build is because it gives a huge 50% melee energy refunded, so after collecting the Warmind Cell, my Seismic Strike is ready to use again. Compare this to Well of Striking, which only gives 20% melee energy back on picking up an Arc Well, and it's much more effective to keep this chain going. Ionic Traces also gives extra energy to Grenade, Melee and Barricade, so overall ability uptime with this is very good. Occasionally Arc Wells will spawn from SMG and Acrius kills as well, which will either make Ad Clear on the SMG, or powerful enemy kills with Acrius much faster too. Hopefully after seeing these three builds, you'll understand why I've made this video. Healing isn't the only thing to consider for endgame content build crafting. You really don't want to sacrifice damage buffs such as Font of Might just to build entirely into healing, and you also don't want to be restricted with weapon choice to only run rockets or grenade launchers for ad clear just to make solar wells. Hopefully the takeaway you'll get from this video is that you can easily incorporate healing into your existing builds with only a couple of mods and a wide variety of weapon and ability choices that you probably didn't realise count as explosive. 
You never know when it might save you when you're extremely weak and continuing to take damage, as well as allowing you to play more aggressively, knowing you have that steady healing in your back pocket. Which brings me on to the extensive list of everything in the game that counts as explosive damage, and I promise you, some of these are very surprising, so it's worth watching. If you think I've missed anything though, let me know in the comments and I'll take a look at it. Obviously all rockets and grenade launchers do, so I'm not going into any further detail on those, and I haven't included aspects, fragments or exotic armors that simply enhance damage types which are already explosive, but I did make sure to include those that turn a previously non-explosive damage source into explosive, so keep an eye out for those. First, some important notes. Any stasis ability that can spawn a crystal or freeze an enemy can trigger explosive wellmaker, because all shatter effects count as explosive. Likewise, all light ability grenades are explosive by default, with the obvious exception of healing grenade on solar. So I won't go into huge amounts of detail on either of these, unless there's something particularly unique about it, or it needs to be used in a certain way for it to count. All poison effects do not count as explosive, so no Osteostriga, Thorn, Lemonarch, or Necrotic Grips. And all Scorch effects also do not count as explosive, with only one exception I'll go into in the Solar Warlock section, whereas all Ignitions do, so be careful if running Solar builds where Scorch may steal your otherwise explosive kills. Finally, Arc effects are extremely inconsistent, whether it's Arc Area of Effect Pulses, Chain Lightning or Lightning Strikes, some do count as explosive, while others don't, so you have to take each individual thing on a case-by-case -case basis. Weapon Perks Dragonfly and Firefly, yes. Explosive Payload, yes, but only the explosive half of the damage, so it can be unreliable if getting initial bullet kills. Explosive Head on Bows, yes, and it's a little more consistent than Explosive Payload, as each shot deals more damage. Timed Payload, yes. Headstone, yes, but only from shattering the crystal or frozen targets and for perks that don't count. Incandescent, no, because Scorch effects are not explosive. Vault Shot, no, because Jolt effects are also not explosive. Kinetic Weapons, Quicksilver Storm, yes. I was only just able to get my hands on this while finishing up the video and it's amazing. Both the occasional micro rocket bullets and the grenade launcher mode both count as explosive. Cryesthesia, Aegis Scepter, and stasis weapons with chill clip. Yes, because they can all freeze and shatter. Malfeasance, yes, but the range on the explosion is very short and you need a multi-kill, so not very viable from stacking five slugs on a major or boss. But if you get a precision kill, it also causes an explosion, so it is possible to spawn solar wells from general ad clear too. Forerunner, yes, but only from the rock grenade function. Wither Horde, yes. Look, I know I literally just said I wasn't going to feature grenade launchers as they're explosive by default, but as it is a very unusual weapon, I wanted to just confirm it here anyway. And for kinetics that you might think would count, but don't, Outbreak Perfected, no, the nanites do not count as explosive, no time to explain, no, the time portal buddy is also not explosive. Energy Weapons, Symmetry, yes, this one was a surprise. The base firing mode does not count as explosive, but for some reason the dynamic charge firing mode does. Polaris Lance, yes, either from Dragonfly or the perfect fifth shot. Sunshot, yes. Tiku's Divination, yes. Graviton Lance, yes. Skyburner's Oath, yes, because technically every bullet is an explosive slug but in practice is very inconsistent due to either enemies dying too quickly from precision hits or the hip-fired scorch effect stealing kills. Telesto, yes. Jotun, yes, and the scorch here is less of an issue because it seems the direct hits count as explosive. Lorentz Driver, yes, from the black hole detonation. Ruinous Effigy, no from the light attacks or drain kills, but yes from heavy slam attacks. Fusion rifles, no from basic fire, but yes from reservoir burst. Cloud strike, yes from the lightning strikes it causes. And for energy weapons that you might think would count, but don't. Risk runner, no, its chain lightning does not count as explosive, 
And this is a good example of what I was saying earlier regarding arc effects being inconsistent. Cloud Strike counts, but Risk Runner doesn't. Trinity Ghoul, no. The Hunter Exotic Glaive Edge of Concurrence, no. General Glaive Projectiles, no. Devil's Ruin, no. Prometheus Lens, no. Heavy Weapons, 1000 Voices, yes. Xenophage, yes. Grand Overture, no from standard shots, but yes from the missile firing mode. Thunderlord, no from standard fire, but yes from the lightning strikes it causes. Black Talon, yes from the heavy attack. Heart Shadow, also yes from the heavy attack. Caster Frame Swords, yes from the heavy attack because they leave lingering area of effect damage, which counts as explosive. Swords with Chain Reaction, yes, but only from the Chain Reaction Explosion. This means it's quite unreliable because enemies need to be close enough to be within the explosion, but not so close that they die to the initial sword attack. Tractor Cannon, yes, this shotgun blast counts as explosive. And for heavy weapons that you might think would count, but don't, Legend of Acrius, no. I was really hoping this counted in a similar way to Tractor Cannon, but unfortunately it doesn't. Leviathan's Breath, no. Weirdly, its explosive blast is not actually explosive. Worldline Zero, no. Mods. Weirdly, Warmind Cell detonations do not count as explosive. Even if using Burning Cells or Rage of the Warmind to add burn and solar damage, the detonation just doesn't count. However, there is one Warmind Cell mod that does count as explosive, and that's Modular Lightning, which releases a burst of Chain Lightning. Here we go again with those arc inconsistencies. And for mods that you might think would count, but don't, Reactive Pulse, no. Arc Fragments, Spark of Shock, which causes Jolt from Grenades. No, because with only a single grenade kill, the subsequent Jolt multi-kill does not spawn a solar well. Spark of Brilliance and Spark of Beacons. No, because their blinding explosions deal no damage. Solar Fragments. Ember of Combustion, which causes explosions from super kills. Yes, but this is only useful on supers that don't already spawn wells from explosive damage, such as Burning Maul's Spin Attack and both types of Golden Gun. Void Fragments. Echo of Expulsion, which causes explosions from void ability kills. Yes, but only useful for abilities that don't count as explosive by default. Echo of Instability, which grants volatile rounds on grenade kills. Yes, volatile detonations are explosive. And there are no stasis fragments which change whether stasis effects count as explosive or not. Arc Hunter. Arc Staff Super, no. Not from the light attack, heavy attack, or slam attack, but yes from deflected enemy projectile attacks. Gathering Storm Super, yes from the initial impact, but no from the lightning strikes that follow. Tempest Strike Aspect for the Slide Melee Uppercut Wave, yes. Lethal Current Aspect for Jolt and Aftershock on melee hits, yes. Disorienting Blow and Combination Blow melees, no. Solar Hunter, Blade Barrage Super, yes. Marksman and Deadshot Golden Gun Supers, no, unless you use Ember of Combustion as mentioned in the Fragment section. Gunpowder Gamble Aspect, yes, because all ignitions count as explosive. Weighted Throwing Knife Melee, no, unless you hit a scorched target, causing an ignition. Proximity Explosive Knife Melee, yes. Knife Trick Melee, no. Lightweight Knife Melee, no. Void Hunter. Shadow Shot Mobius Quiver Super, yes. Shadow Shot Deadfall Super, no. But with Echo of Expulsion, yes. Spectral Blade Super, no. But with Echo of Expulsion, yes. However, the only way to do it is to heavy attack at a distance so that area of effect damage kills and explodes targets where they stand. Otherwise, they go flying away from the enemies you want to die to the explosions. Snare Bomb Melee, both with and without the Trapper's Ambush aspect, yes. Stasis Hunter. 
Silence and Squall Super. Yes, you can either freeze with the first hit and shatter manually, or the Storm from the second hit will freeze and shatter on its own. Shatter Dive Aspect. Yes, either from shattering crystals or frozen enemies as intended, or weirdly, its direct impact damage also counts as explosive. Not that that is in any way viable due to how little damage it does, but I still thought it was interesting. Withering Blade Melee. No, if it kills directly before it can freeze. But yes, if freezing a higher health target with two shurikens, then shattering them. Winter's Shroud Aspect. No, because it only applies slow stacks and doesn't freeze directly, so would need to be combined with other slow effects. Hunter Exotic Armor. Celestial Nighthawk on both forms of Golden Gun, yes, because it causes defeated enemies to explode. Bombardiers on all subclasses, yes, from the initial explosion. On Stasis, it also applies slow stacks, but these aren't enough to freeze a higher health target for an additional shatter, even when paired with Winter's Shroud's slow dodge. And just because I'm a Hunter main and was too curious for my own good, I also tested Sixth Coyote's interactions with the Winter's Shroud slow dodge on Stasis. From two slow dodges, it doesn't apply enough stacks to freeze targets, but with Traveler's Chosen charged and ready, you can get off three slow dodges to freeze enemies. Not that anyone would ever do this for any reason, though. Arc Warlock. Storm Trance Super, yes, from the initial landfall blast on casting, including the little seekers that travel from it but no from the roaming super itself. Chaos Reach Super, yes, for some reason. Lightning Surge Aspect for sliding charged melees, yes. Arc Soul Aspect, no. Ball Lightning Melee, no. And Chain Lightning Melee, no. Solar Warlock, Daybreak Super, yes. Well of Radiant Super, yes, from multi-kills on the initial cast. Phoenix Dive class ability. This is the Scorch exception I mentioned earlier. It doesn't count as explosive by default because it does no damage, but with the Heat Rises aspect active, it adds Scorch, which for some reason does now count as explosive. Incinerating Snap Melee, no. Celestial Fire Melee, no. Void Warlock. Nova Bomb Vortex Super, yes. Nova Bomb Cataclysm Super, yes, from both the initial explosion and the Seekers. Nova Warp Super, yes. Pocket Singularity Melee, yes, but I think only because of volatile explosions. If there are only two enemies and they both die directly to the melee, it won't count as an explosive multi-kill. Child of the Old Gods Aspect, no, but if using Echo of Expulsion for explosions on Void Ability Kills, yes. Note the Drain effect does very little direct damage, so is only effective against weak enemies. Stasis Warlock. Winter's Wrath Super. No from the initial impact damage, but yes from freezing and shattering. Frost Pulse Aspect. Yes because it freezes on Rift Cast, allowing a shatter. Bleak Watcher Aspect. Yes because it freezes enemies for you to shatter manually, but if left alone, is unreliable because the turrets seem to prioritise enemies that aren't already frozen, and it might despawn before it gets round to killing and shattering a frozen enemy. You can improve this by running Cold Snap Grenades and Osmiomancy Gloves, which allow you to place a second turret, but it still takes a while. Penumbral Blast Melee. No from initial impact multi-kills, but yes from shattering frozen enemies after impact. Warlock Exotic Armour. Vesper of Radius. Yes, and it works on any subclass. Chromatic Fire, yes, and the explosion is most consistent on the light subclasses, whereas on Stasis, it slows and freezes, potentially requiring a follow-up shatter. Enemies need to be close to the initial kill to freeze, so if far away, they will only get slowed and you won't be able to spawn a solar well. Honestly, you might as well just run a weapon with Firefly rather than using your exotic slot here. Fell Winter's Helm. No, the blast deals no damage, it only weakens. Arc Titan. Thunder Crash Super. No from initial impact, but yes from the aftershock. Fist of Havoc Super. Yes on initial cast, further heavy slams, and the aftershock from heavy slams. But no on the light attack melee. Touch of Thunder aspect with storm grenades. Yes, the lightning strikes from the cloud count as explosive. 
but with lightning grenades, no. From only one grenade kill, the subsequent jolt multi-kill does not count as explosive. Seismic strike melee, yes. Ballistic slam melee, yes. Thunderclap melee, no. But with point contact cannon brace, yes from the additional lightning strikes. Solar Titan, Hammer of Soul Super, yes. Burning Maul Super, no from either the spin or slam attacks, but yes from the flame that travels from the slam. Ember of Combustion, which creates explosions on super kills, also works here. Consecration Aspect, yes from both the initial wave and the air slam. Hammer Strike Melee, yes, both from the cone of damage on initial impact and from the ignition on kill. Sol Invictus Aspect, no, sunspots don't count as explosive. Throwing Hammer Melee, no. Void Titan, Sentinel Shield Super, no from the light attack or shield block, but yes from the shield throw. You can combine this with the Echo of Expulsion Fragment or the Controlled Demolition Aspect, which then allows light attacks and shield blocking to spawn wells. Shield Bash Melee, yes. Shield Throw Melee, no, unless you use Controlled Demolition or Echo of Expulsion. Stasis Titan. Glacial Quake Super, yes on heavy slams to spawn crystals and freeze targets, and while in super, simply sprinting through a stasis crystal or frozen enemy will instantly shatter it, which is useful. But the light attack supercharged shiver strike does not count as explosive. However, because it uses super energy, you can chain multiple melees to freeze nearby targets and shatter those instead. Diamond Lance Aspect, yes, both thrown and slammed. Howl of the Storm Aspect, Yes, you can use this to either freeze and shatter low health enemies instantly who are caught in it, or for spawning extra crystals to shatter manually. Shiver Strike Melee, no. Titan Exotic Armor, Severance Enclosure, yes on all subclasses. Kepri's Horn, yes. ACDO Feedback Fence, yes. Hoarfrost Z, yes, but only because it gives you a way to spawn crystals and freeze targets for resulting shatter multi-kills. Dune Marchers, yes. Lorry Splendor Helm, no, because sunspots don't count as explosive. Icefall Mantle, no, because it doesn't freeze on cast, only slows. And that's it. Hopefully you'll find this video useful for your own build crafting, and I'm also hoping that Bungie doesn't change any of these explosive interactions in the future, because I am definitely not doing this again. Okay, bye!